and this part of my bag, I'm honestly kind of embarrassed about. What's going on guys? Welcome to week 63 of my journey to scratch. What I want to do today, probably what is the most requested video on my channel, which is what's in the bag. So I've done one of these probably right around a year ago. It'll be pretty nice to show you guys what has changed in my golf bag. I also think a big point of this video is going to be sort of holding myself accountable for all the changes that I need to make because you guys will see there's a lot of issues in this bag. There's a lot of gapping concerns that I have and I just haven't addressed them because you know, it's expensive to buy golf clubs. So yeah, let's kind of go through the bag really quickly. And then as I see a problem, I'll kind of point it out and let you guys know what I think I'm going to be doing. Let's start out with the wedge that I use the absolute most. This is my baby. I literally use this inside 100 yards for everything, for any full shot inside of 100 yards and also any pitching and any short game shot. This is my Cleveland 588, 56 degree. I've had this since I started playing golf. I realistically didn't put it in my golf bag till about two and a half years ago. Grooves themselves are, as you can tell, just super, super worn. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to change this guy out pretty soon, but this has an FSD shaft, Tor Velvet grips. Right there with the putter and driver, this is probably the third most used club in my bag. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're getting very little spin out of it these days, and I think it's time for a change. Also, I try to buy this exact same club, but it's so old that you can't find it anywhere. So with that said, I actually put this 58 degree in my bag, which my buddy Zhang gave to me a long time ago, and I haven't used it yet, but I've practiced with it, and it feels really good. So it's a Vokey SM5, which I'm fairly confident is a very, very old wedge, but the most important part is the grooves are still in really good shape. So yeah, I'm gonna put this guy in my bag, but it's a 58 degree, so it's not gonna go as far, but you guys will see that I have a huge kind of gapping concern with my wedges anyway, so I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. I think it's just a standard shaft that comes with the Vokies. I'm gonna change the grip on this guy, but yeah, just put it in the bag. Honestly, practicing, practicing with it felt really, really good, so I'm really excited. I was getting so much more spin that I'm used to seeing, so that'll be really good for my game. Now we go down to a 50 degree. So that, that's kind of where it doesn't make much sense. So I go 50, so 58, 56, and then now I go down to a 50 degree. And this is a wedge that I think is part of an iron set. My buddy Zhang also gave me this one. This is a KBS Tor C Taper Light, 110 grams, which is a shaft that's very similar to my irons. So anytime I have 100 yards, I take out this guy, which is a Mizuno T7 50 degree with seven degrees of bounce. I've hit some really good shots with it. It feels very similar to my irons, but I think the move is going to be to really standardize my wedges. So whether I go Vokey or, or I go Jaws or, or something from TaylorMade, I'm not quite sure yet, but the plan is to get kind of the same three types of wedges here pretty soon. All right, so now let's go into the irons and it's gonna get kind of funky. We're still technically still in the wedges because my first club with my irons is a 48 degree wedge, which I pretty much only use uh, for 115 yards. And of course, this just feels like an iron, so it feels super, super natural. I absolutely love it. I got fit for these irons last year. I made two videos on it. Um, we got Dynamic Gold 105s. They're kind of a regular flex shaft. If you watch my video, you'll see some, some regular flex shafts are kind of more stiff, some stiff are more regular. So don't worry too much about that. Just hit a variety of them and figure out what works best for you. But these are the beautiful T100Ss from Titleist. I actually bought these as the T150s were coming out. I got to test out the 150s and they were gonna cost a little bit more money. I was gonna have to wait, I think like a month or so. And there was a difference, I'm not gonna lie, there was a difference, uh, but I just didn't think it was a big enough difference to make the change. So this is set up for me to hit high because my Typical trajectory is really, really low. So, so Mike over at Sellinger has really helped me put in this combination to help me kind of get the ball up in the air a little bit more. So like I said, I go 48 all the way down to a five iron. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out, I'm gonna add a four iron of the same set type and remove my hybrid. And then I'm also going to remove one of the wedges and add probably a five wood. So now diving into the hybrids and woods in this part of my bag, I'm honestly kind of embarrassed about because it's just, it's just not very good. I go four hybrid with this 22 degree tailor-made arrow burner. This is one of my oldest clubs. I've had this probably since 2016 or 2017. And it's got, a, let's see, a Fubuki. It's a Mitsubishi Fubuki 70 gram regular flex shaft, which is just a standard shaft that came with this guy. This is honestly one of the most important clubs in my bag because 
it gave me so much comfort in knowing that I always had a 200 yard shot, especially before I started taking lessons and my swing wasn't all that consistent. I just felt like I could always hit this club and always rely on this club. Uh, now I, I, I don't think I need it as much and I would rather you know, kind of upgrade to a four iron that I can control a little bit better and then also get a five wood to get a little bit more distance. So that's the plan in this region of the bag for now. Now we move up to my three wood. My three wood is also old. I think I bought this back in 2017, but I put it back in my bag about two years ago. And it's been really good. I, I use this a lot. It's a Cobra King F7. I have it set to 13.5 degrees. It could be a three wood, four wood, but I have it set to pretty much a three wood with a draw bias on it. We've got kind of a standard shaft that came with it, um, which was a Fuji Kura 65 gram shaft, which was also a regular flex. And quite honestly, I probably will eventually change out, like once I add a five wood, I'm probably gonna try to match the five wood and the three wood just so that we are gapped pretty consistently, but it's not high on my priority list right now. I know that I can do okay with this guy. There is a big gap between my three wood and my, and my driver. So we're gonna have to figure that out as well. So now moving on to the driver, this guy was a big, big addition to my bag. But yeah, it's a Rogue ST Max LS with a Ventus Blue Shaft 6S. So it's 10.5 degrees of loft and it's set to a draw bias. Me and Zach gave one of these away, I think like nine months ago or so. Hopefully we'll be able to do more giveaways here in the future. So make sure you subscribe. I'm sure we're gonna do other giveaways here in the upcoming year. I think my driver really was one of the biggest reasons I went from probably a 15 handicap down to a 10. I, I really don't lose that many golf balls off the tee. And this is a big reason why. The misses are just so much more consistent. But fortunately, so talking with Zach, and some of you guys have pointed it out as well, I'm spinning this guy way too much. So I'm spinning this guy right around 3000 RPMs, which is a lot. I'm probably losing 15 yards of carry just from that alone. So that's going to be a big change. We're gonna have to, we're likely going to have to change the shaft. So I think probably this is going to be the first change that we do. Hopefully I don't have to change out my head because quite honestly, golf clubs are expensive. I would rather change out the shaft and not spend, you know, only spend a couple hundred as opposed to spending 600, 700 on a new driver. All right, so now going into the most important club in the bag. I genuinely believe I'm a seven, whatever, 7.9, 7.8, whatever handicap I'm at right now. I genuinely believe it's because of this guy. I've just gained so much confidence in my putting in the last year. I practice my putting a lot, but this guy makes me feel so confident over the ball. Yeah, and quite honestly, this was a very cheap putter. I bought this for like 65 bucks. Look at this guy. So this is the White Hot OG1 from Odyssey. It's super simple. It's got a, just a simple Odyssey grip on it. I think it's 33 inches off the ground. And guys, I, I love this thing. I really do. It just, I don't know, it just fits my eye. Biggest thing is just confidence. Like I can look down at this club and just have a good feeling. I'm at least going to putt the ball where I want it to start. And it's a, it's a cheap old putter, but man, it does the job. And I love this thing. I'm not planning on getting rid of it anytime soon. So that does it for the clubs in the bag. Now let's talk about some accessories that I have in here as well. So of course, super crucial, having an alignment stick, having an alignment stick, something that I think everybody should have. Uh, and then I just added this in the bag after watching a video from Phil Mickelson saying that warming up your central nervous system before a round of golf is, is not a bad idea. So like after you get done with your warm up, swinging a club really, really fast can really help you make sure that, you know, your club head speed is not dipping down a whole lot. So I've actually added the super speed stick, the green, which is a lightweight option. And the plan is once I finish warming up, I swing this guy as fast as I possibly can, maybe hit a couple more drives on the range and get on my way. Okay, now heading into my bag, let's talk about this bag really quick. It's from Amata Golf, it's a smaller company. I was planning on partnering with them and I actually got their range finder as well. Quite honestly, I would only promote something on this channel if I truly believed in it. And I just, I think the products are way too expensive for what they are. So I decided to not partner with them, but I still rock their stuff. I think this bag is really nice. Eventually we'd like to change it, but for now it does it, it does its job. Um, so yeah, the bag's okay. The range finder is pretty awful. All right, now diving into the pockets. So we got a tool for the driver and my three wood. I got some hot hands. Obviously it's cold right now. And then I have this little pencil case. I had this idea back, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I absolutely love this because I keep all of the things that are super small and loose in here. And yeah, it just keeps it all in one place. 
It looks pretty nice, it looks classy. It was like 10 bucks, right? Yeah, I thought it was a really good idea. I'll link it, I'll link this exact same one down below. I think I got it on Amazon. But yeah, I keep some golf balls, whatever, you know, whatever golf balls I'm using. I keep my divot tool in here, all of my tees. Keep some bandages just in case I get blisters. I also got some, you know, Carmex. And yeah, and then just a bunch of different ball marks, you know, some cooler than others. Let's give a shout out to Busta Jack. So I actually went to Busta Jack's fan meetup last year and they were super cool and they gave, they gave this to everybody. So I sometimes use it. This big pocket has all the golf balls that either are getting old or some that I found in the wild. Usually not the ones that I would typically grab and use, but we have them in there just in case. I also just designed this little golf journal. Um, I haven't used it yet, but plan is essentially for it to be a scorecard that I can just continue to use. So I'll be able to look back on it and see what went right, what went wrong for certain days and just kind of use it as a, as a, as a golf journal. Um, and it's pretty small so you can keep it in your back pocket while you're playing. And yeah, so I've, I designed this, I haven't published it or anything, but if you guys have any interest in it, let me know. And I can certainly publish it on Amazon for you guys to purchase yourselves. But yeah, so I haven't used it yet, but I'm excited to start using it this season. This pocket has the golf balls that I'm currently using because I'm testing three out right now. First one being the Pro V1, which is what I've been using for the last like year and a half or so. The second is a Pro V1X, which is obviously very similar to the Pro V1, but adds a little bit more spin. It also makes a trajectory a little bit higher. I think this is the right golf ball for me, but I'm testing it out just to make sure it is. And then the last is a Srixon Z-Star. I haven't gotten comfortable with it yet. Obviously going from a Pro V1 to a Pro V1X is pretty easy but it's just, I don't know, different feel, different look, but I get a lot of spin off of this ball, so it might be the right move. So just kind of testing all three out and seeing what works best. So we got some, we got some towels, really big towel from Clinch, which I absolutely love. Uh, we got a brush to clean our grooves from Frogger, which it's huge. I have this little, my friends make fun of me for this, but it's a little towel, and I really only use it whenever it's like wet or muddy outside, uh, and I clip it onto like my belt strap like this. What else am I missing? And then I also have this guy, which I use to record my swing. So if I'm out in the wild or practicing or whatever, I just have this guy, which makes it really easy because you can like move it around quite a bit. If you like looking at your swing and stuff, this makes it so, so easy. I'll link it down below as well. I think I got it on Amazon for maybe 15 bucks. So now let's talk golf gloves. I've promoted Clinch before on my channel. I, it's a product that I, I think it's the best golf glove in the market. It's been a big game changer for me. I bought this one, this exact glove in June of last year. As you can tell, yeah, it's a little dirty, but it is in such good shape. It hasn't ripped, it hasn't, it's not broken or anything. Ever since I promoted them on my channel, they actually reached out to me and gave me two more golf gloves. So they gave me this blue one and another gray one. And these are the ones I keep in my golf bag. So since June, so in eight months, and you guys know how much golf I play, in eight months, I've had three golf gloves that I rotate and they're all still in perfect shape. So these are dirtier, but the coolest thing is is that you can actually throw this in the washer because it's not leather and it will clean it right off. So I actually do need to do that here pretty soon. But yeah, these guys, man, I, I couldn't recommend them enough. Like obviously here in Dallas, it's really hot in the summertime. So on top of that, my hands are super sweaty. I probably went through a glove every three weeks. If you haven't checked them out, I strongly recommend you do. I mean, it's like, I think 25 bucks for a golf glove and I think it's gonna last you a long time. So just check it out and, and see if it's for you. I should still have a promo code. I'll make sure of it before I link it up here, but it's EarnDog10, I'm almost certain to get 10% off. So. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a lot of changes to make on this golf bag. I am so excited for next year and like looking back and seeing how much it's, it's, it's gonna change. So I'm gonna get fit for a driver. So I'll be, I'll be posting that as well. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button. It helps me out a lot. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Introduce yourself down below. Let me know if you've had any of these clubs and what you use right now. And like I mentioned guys, if you haven't checked out that fitting video, it was so freaking good. And if you've never been fit yourself, Gosh, I strongly recommend you do. It was, it was pretty eye-opening. So I'm gonna link that video probably right here or here. And with that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I hope you're staying warm out there, and playing some good golf if you're able to. And I honestly appreciate you guys so much and I appreciate all your support so, so much. So yeah, have a blessed week. I'll catch you guys next week. Take care.